now I can take a picture for Instagram and it'll look like there's more people here than there really are. Okay. <laughs> I'll Photoshop people in. Okay, I think it's time to get underway with this uh, pump you up session. Um, I'm not sure you need pumping up. That's one of the things I want to talk about. How many of you are feeling really good about being a BA these days? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the asterisk next to the A, that, that it could be business analyst, it could be a business architect, it could be a business activist. Uh, I don't know. We, we, the great thing about this conference is it's a big tent conference. Lots of, lots of disciplines coming together. Anyway, let me, uh, let me start out um, telling you how this, how this came about. And I, I assume almost everybody was in that great keynote this morning with Roy Barnes and so on. And, and you remember the, the, the bit where they had Roger? Roger Burlton had to put on the, the shirt of the winning team. So Roger and I are both Spurs supporters. Uh, he's, uh, Roger's actually born in Tottenham. If anybody here was from the UK, they'd be laughing at me for being a Spurs supporter. Uh, <laughs> okay, yay. Let me, if, if you go to my Twitter, uh, you'll see the, you know, the Spurs right, right there. Anyway, so Roger kind of bribed me. You know, he took me to, to a couple of Spurs matches and basically, now that you're here, I have a favor to ask. You know, we have this pump you up idea. And I thought, it was a moment of probably Guinness-inspired weakness. So I said, yeah, it sounds like something I can do. It's only 20 minutes. How tough could that be? Eh, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Now, be before we carry on, let me, let me first of all, can we have a, a round of applause for the AV people at this conference? I, I was blown away this morning. Now, I recently uh, had a, an interesting AV experience, and that was uh, I was speaking at an IIBA chapter overseas. I'm pledged to secrecy. I'm not supposed to say which one, uh, but it's a lovely chapter, my favorite probably. Anyway, I show up to do a talk, package software gone bad, had a, you know, Pretty big crowd showed up, and we started trying to connect to the projector, and the projector just would not work. So I'm like, oh, good thing I put so much work into that deck. But I looked across the stage, because I was really in kind of a theater, and I thought, thank God, they have the flip chart stand I ordered. So I walked over to check out the flip chart stand, and that's all it was a flip chart stand. There was no actual pad of paper on it. Okay, I thought, at least there's some whiteboard markers here. So I picked one up to test it, because the back of the stand was, in fact, a, a small whiteboard. And I checked it out, and okay, that looks like it'll work. And then I went to erase it, and it wouldn't erase. It was that uniquely British feature, the one-time whiteboard. So what that meant was I had no slides, no flip charts, and something I could draw one picture on. So I thought, boy, this better be a good picture. So I was keeping that in mind. So here's my presentation. Re reduced my just-in-time presentation, reduced to one picture. Well, actually not. I've got a little bit more than that. But like I said earlier, I'm, I'm not sure that you actually need that much to get pumped up. So when I was, was at the BA conference last month in London, who, who else was there? I know some of you, my front row. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Yeah, the, there was a lot of happy, pumped up people. Like for instance, my friend Adrian Reed here in the front row. Would you say he looks pretty happy about being a BA? Yeah, I thought uh, we should give Adrian a round of applause for his great presentations and his good cheer. He was maybe a little more dubious when we surprised him with this one, but I felt good about it, and so did Georgie. Uh, anyway, so the, the, it was interesting. When we talked about the conference afterwards, a lot of people said, the thing I notice is how much, how positive it is. Like that was, it just, the, the whole conference exuded Positivity, and that's that's what I've been feeling so far. I mean, I had uh, I 
where's my friends from Denmark are in it. Yay! Hi, you guys. Um, so look, lots of smiling, happy people here at, uh, at BBC 2019. Uh, I did a thing on facilitation. Any, did anybody suffer through my thing on facilitation on Monday? A few, and you came back, too. Well, that's great. Well, I, I had uh, almost 100 people there, and they were the, the most alive and energetic group I've ever had uh, uh, of that size. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how much pumping up we need, but let me say a few things. Um, first of all, five years ago, not so much. Now, five years ago at these conferences uh, and B other BA conferences I, conferences I went to, there was a little bit more uh, of um, a little bit more woe is me in some of the presentations and how do I get respect for being a BA? How do I engage with agile teams? You know, how do I how do I get developers to pay attention to what I have to say? And, and I would say it's it's very different now. And I was talking to Coop. Now I'm just is Coop anywhere around here? He's probably got his own thing to do. He'll be on this afternoon. So I was talking to, to Coop uh, yesterday morning about this, and he said, well, yeah, actually, it was really different then. And, and a lot of it was because we, especially BAs, let me just, I should check this. How many of you are a BA, as in a business analyst? OK, the vast majority. And then business architects? The minority, but it was ever thus. <laughs> right, Mike? A vocal minority. Anyway, uh, largely saw ourselves, uh, our analysts, as the bridge between the business and technology. Uh, and we were eliciting requirements, often very granular functional requirements, uh, creating the dreaded business requirements document, um, weeping when developers ignore it, possibly. Um, and that's largely, I think, because we were doing analysis. Frankly, I, I've always objected to the term business analysis because analysis is the systematic breaking down of something into its component parts. And I think that might have, might have been uh, appropriate at the time, but it's different now. And that's, I'm going to encourage you to go and see uh, Coop and Angela this afternoon. They've been doing a lot of research on how analysis is different now, uh, which I, I hope will tie into some of the things that, that I, I'm going to be saying over the next few minutes. Um, so uh, they'll be on, yeah, I think at about 4.15. Um, let me just, there was, yeah, anyway, the, the, the point is things are very different. Uh, I've had my own consulting business for 35 years now even more, and the biggest change I've noticed in that time, and, and it's only accelerated in the last few years, is, hey, everybody join with me. This is how much time you used to have. This is how much time you have now. Would, would you agree that, that time, shrinking time pressure, or increasing time pressure and shrinking time frames, that's the big change that I've seen, and, and that means, for one, there just isn't time to spend a lot of time breaking things down into smaller parts. Now, as Coop pointed out to me, we don't so much need a bridge between the business, another phrase I was never terribly wild about because I think we are part of the business, but technology is ubiquitous, it's in the business, and a bridge isn't necessarily the answer. So we've got the Internet of Things. We've got all these data issues. Uh, I do most of my work now in Northern Europe. And the way my data modeling business has exploded is just, I, I never imagined it would take off the way it does. It's just huge interest, uh, both driven by regulation, you know, GDPR, um, privacy concerns, but also just making better use of data. Uh, there's machine learning, which obviously is a use of data, uh, AI, blockchain, complex event processing, and we don't know what's going to come along next. So it's, it's a very different world, I think, than it was a few years ago. And so the business needs our help more than anything else, not to, not to take this complex environment and break it down into its pieces, 
but we have to, everybody join with me. I want, I want all of you going like this. Um. Okay, do it for me. Um. Just a sec. Keep, keep it up, keep it up. Okay, I gotta get this. Okay, one more time. Um. Oh yeah, it looks, it's like a religious event. Let me get this side too. Um. Right, as we're going to see, that is synthesis, okay? Businesses need our help. Nobody is better equipped to deal with the complexity of, well, not just the technology, but the complexity of business. Regulatory change, changing customer expectations, retaining uh, a workforce. There's just so many issues and so many moving parts that our help is really needed. And I think that what businesses need is synthesis more than analysis. Can you do it again for me? Um, you could do better. I'm going to give you another chance in a minute. They need synthesis, which is the combination or composition of parts or elements to, so as to form a whole as opposed to analysis. Or in the age of design, because we're all about design thinking, designing customer journeys, they might, we could say that design is just as desirable. And who, who knows Graham Simpson? Who recognizes the name? Well, if this was a data conference, uh, every hand in the house would go up. So is it, is it really just Liz? So Graham Simpson, uh, a guy I really admire, a, a real and honest-to-goodness renaissance man, a, a guy who, um, he had a, a consulting company. He, he, he's a business analyst, um, and he had a, a, a consulting company in Australia that that focused on business analysis, but he also did a lot of data work, which is how I got to meet him. He also uh, rents out his chateau in France. Uh, he, in an, a classic taking coals to Newcastle, he imported wine from Washington State to Australia, uh, became a national uh, a facilitator of national events, and this is why I hate him now. He wrote a novel that is one of the top well, it's, he's got a whole series of novels. See what your skills as a business analyst, you, you might end up writing a book that gets optioned by Sony Pictures and literally earning millions of dollars. He's spoken at a few of our conferences on how what he learned as a business analyst helped him become a great novelist. Or, if you will, everybody, um, a great synthesist. Synthesizing a whole complete story out of, basically, out of thin air. Anyway, the point that I wanted to make, and I'm gonna back up a bit, I talked about design. Uh, another thing I've always been dubious about is the idea that there should be no elements of design in our requirements. And Graham was, was also um, pretty dubious about that, so he did a PhD, I think it's coming up for about 10 years now, and interviewed top business analysts uh, particularly people doing data modeling, but business analysts around the world. And he concluded that we actually have much more in common with design-oriented activities, like, like being an architect. Because a person can have a set of requirements, but how you interact with them basically changes. Well, the architect ends up understanding requirements, but also designing a home or a solution that will meet that. So he's concluded that what we do is actually much more of a design. It's not purely analysis. Certainly, we have to do fact-finding. But ultimately, it's a design activity. And that's, again, that's what our businesses need. There are such complexity, and everybody is, there's so many specialists in business. People like us are really needed to pull those parts together. So I like to make the claim that we are synthesists. Okay. So I'd like you all to stand up. That's right. And, and one more time, just to, to, to loosen up. Everybody, um. Now, now that I've got you up, I want you to introduce yourself to a person, not beside you, but in front of you or behind you, and I want you to say, hi, I'm, whatever your name is, I'm a business synthesist. Do it.
Well, I think I'll just leave you to it. <laughs> Proof again that, that BAs are, are social animals. You know, when I first started talking, um, like on the conference circuit, uh, I guess it's probably about 10 years now, I've been claiming that we should be called business synthesists as opposed to business analysts. Penny seems to agree. Um, it didn't really take off. It, it's hard to say after a couple of drinks. And the, it has kind of an unfortunate acronym. <laughs> but I actually encountered um, a company in, uh, the first one was in Washington State, uh, in the Seattle area. And they had people whose job title was business synthesist. And if that doesn't appeal to you, uh, there's another one that's especially popular in the UK, business change designer. Because to me, that's the essence of what we do as business analysts. We help, help an organization go from where they are now to someplace where they want to be in the future. So it's your golden moment, everybody. It's your golden moment. This, really what's happening here is I always wanted to end a presentation with a picture of my awesome wife on the screen. Oh, yes, OK. Now, I, I also had a banner on here uh, inviting you to go forth and synthesize, but PowerPoint carefully wiped out uh, a couple of my slides, and I had to, I had to put these back together uh, really quickly. But hey, Adrian, make sure you get a picture of me so I can send it to my wife. OK? See, and, and look at, uh, gentlemen. Um, the BA gets the girl. If, if I wasn't a business analyst and she wasn't a business analyst, I never would have met her on the best contract I ever had in my life, 35 years ago. OK, that's it from me. I hope everybody's feeling pumped up. Um, go forth and synthesize, and have a great conference. <laughs>